Good morning, Neetha Adaramchu. Wow. Sumi Hilli Natha Kripalal, or English, right? Ah, my bad. My name is Hilli Natha Klu. I'm, um, I'm an architect by profession, but currently I work on two companies. One is called Climate Change Africa, the other is called Seed Bomb Ethiopia. And there are so many questions that people ask me, like, how are you an architect that's working on agriculture? Well, my journey started when I was at the university because when you learn architecture, you just don't learn how to build a building. You learn how to have a sustainable life. You learn how to build a sustainable life. So back then at the university, I was at Addis Ababa University. Back then we had this called course called Sustainable Architecture and I just fall in love with it. It talks about climate change. It talks about different alternative materials and so forth. So that's how I developed my interest to sustainable architecture, and that's how I got into the sustainable life. But then, even when I was at the university, I was just, I didn't want to go out and just work for anybody. So I was looking for my own project. What should I do? What can I do? As an architect, I just don't want to build a building. And then, through time, in 2016, um, I stumbled into this journey of climate change. So in, uh, I took a course for the Yali Young African Leaders Initiative. I took one course there called Understanding Climate Change. And after a month, I got called by the US Embassy saying, come take the certificate personally instead of online. So I got excited. I just graduated. I had literally nothing to do. So I went to the US Embassy. And then when I went there, the thing that I encountered was, sure, they're going to give me my certificate and everything, but at the same time, there were so many youth, like six, seven projects of youth that were just presenting their project. This is my climate change fighting project. This is my vertical farming and so forth. And I kept asking myself, OK, I'm here lucky enough to be at this embassy listening to these projects. What about the rest of the society? What about the rest of the people? How are they going to listen to this project? How are the youth going to be exposed to this project? So right and then, right there and then, I decided, and I finally found my project. OK, I'm going to be the bridge. That will actually be the bridge between the experts, the government, and the youth. Because 70% of the African youth population, we are the population at the 70%. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do a project. I'm just going to come up with something. And then I took the business card of the public affairs section back then, Mr. David. And I just emailed him in like three days saying, I have this event idea. I'm not really sure where I'm going to go with it. But it's going to be related to climate change. And then he called me. I talked to him. And then we came, I came up with, OK, I'm going to create the platform for the youth. Would you guys help me? And the embassy was courageous enough to help me. And henceforth, we came up with a project called Climate Change Africa. So basically, in Climate Change Africa, what we do is we create the platform. We're like the TEDx for climate change, I guess. So what we do is we create the platform for the African youth. Yeah, we started with Ethiopia, and then we went to Kenya. So basically, what we do is we create the platform, and we don't talk about the problems. We've been talking about climate change and its problems for a minute now. So from now on, we decided, OK, let's talk about solutions. No more problems. We've been hearing that. And so Climate Change Africa's basic point is to create the platform for the youth so that we could talk about our problems. I mean, we could talk about our solutions. <laughs> and so what we do in Climate Change Africa is we divided the environment into two, the spoiled environment and the unspoiled environment. So this basically helped us on which one should we focus on. Is this area more spoiled? Is this area more unspoiled? If this is un unspoiled, not that much, let's focus on this more, work on this, find a solution, and come to this one. So that's how we divided the environment, spoiled and environment. And then <coughs> we started thinking of, OK, what's the youth and its relationship with the environment? Do they see climate change as irreversible? Do they see climate change as a solution? Are they willing to go for it and work for it? 
So these were the things that made us determine which projects are we taking, which projects are we not taking. And then, so we came up with, okay, how do we create this platform and how do we make it more impactful? So we decided, let's have an expo. An expo, we have a yearly expo. What we do is we connect the experts, be it government, non-government, whatsoever, with the youth. I am a youth that has a solution. You are a government official that, has a sol that can listen to me and provide something for my solution. So we created that platform. Experts, youth, sit together, work. Listen to one another. That's what we're missing. We don't listen to each other. So we created this platform so that we could actually listen to one another. And then I don't know if you guys can see the picture as much, but um, we had an expo in Ethiopia in 2016, 17, and 18. Uh, next. And then we did one in Kenya. And the reason that we did it in Kenya is because we wanted to discuss with them, okay, I'm trying to protect my country from climate change, but then how am I gonna be safe if my neighbor is not protecting itself? Or if my neighbor's house is on fire, how am I gonna be sure that that fire is not gonna come to my house? So whenever I talk about Ethiopia's climate change, I have to talk about Kenya's as well. So we went to Kenya and then we discussed with them. They taught us some things. We taught them about our green legacy. And then we created a network as well, not only in Ethiopia, but through Kenya. So while we were doing this, we were, I was actually looking for, okay, I'm collecting you this projects. What am I gonna do? What is my contribution? CCA or Climate Change Africa is not enough for me. So I need more. And then in 2018, I got introduced to the concept of seed bowls. Seed bowls are marble-sized bowl of clay that are made up of, at least in our case, red clay soil, black soil, and chicken residue, and seeds. So basically what we do is, can we show them? I don't know if you guys can see it, basically. So with seed bombs, what we're trying to do is, one, we're trying to uh, fight deforestation because seed weights are very lightweight. Um, I'm gonna speak this in Amharic. Do you guys remember like, that's literally seed bowl mallet so no us to seed nuro mallet now so basically what seed bombs help one it will fight deforestation to areas like uh, there are so many areas that are inaccessible to human beings <coughs> so in that we can actually throw seed bowl trees using planes or drones to different areas that are inaccessible at the same time what we do is it will change the way agriculture is being approached in Ethiopia and also Africa. You know, 80% of the Ethiopian economy is agriculture. So this will be a basic solution or a simple solution. Right now what's happening is farmers are digging 60 centimeters to put in the seedling, and then there's some cow, manamen, just a whole process. But with seed bombs, there's no such process as that. This is the land, this is the soil. What we do is we put the seed bowls on there, no digging, no nothing. So energy consuming, time consuming, and so forth. And also when it comes to deforestation in accessible areas, like I cannot go to Abwai Baraha holding a seedling, but I can throw the three seed bowls in that area, and once rainy season is there, just let it be. If the seed doesn't expire, let's say the Wanza seed doesn't expire for 10 years, you can actually place that in the Abai area and wait for the rain and it will grow itself. If it's not a rainy season, we water it maximum two through three weeks. And also when it comes to farming, it will increase income for farmers because seedlings have 60% growth rate, while seed bombs have to 80 to 90% growth rates. I wish you guys could see the picture, but here there's the mixing and the rolling process. It has its own process. We have a production site, so that's where we work. There's the drying process. It has its own process. And I don't know if you guys could see it, but these are the seed bowls, like a small marble sized of seed bowls. And at the moment, we work with the Ministry of Agriculture 
so that they give us the seeds that are indigenous to Ethiopia. And we also take different wage tables and so forth from them. And so what our main aim is for agriculture to be changed, the backward system to be changed, and also to find deforestation with seed balls. So our target markets, of course, we need the farmers. Like, we want to work with the farmers because they, their life can be changed through this. And we're determined to change their life through this. And we also will work with the government, the government, and anybody that has interest in the field of making Ethiopia green, we're willing to work with them. Next. Um, so when it comes to our markets, I just want to touch a little bit. When it comes to seedlings, you find them from 50 burr to 5,000 burr. When it comes to seed balls, we want to sell it maximum of 200 burr. And the reason we're doing this is we want everybody to be fed. We don't understand why Ethiopia is in poverty. It's so stupid. We have everything that we need, but our greed is making us be this way. So with seed bombs, we're trying to attack no poverty and zero hunger, and we want to feed the Ethiopian people easily and simply ways. Um, what have, we have worked so far with US Embassy Addis Ababa, for example, Zoma Museum. You can find our products both in Andinat Park and the Zoma Museum Sarbate itself. We're working with GIZ, we work with ISADIS, and we work with different individuals. As I said, anybody that's willing to work with us to make Ethiopia green or Ethiopia Narangwadi Nalvis, and anybody that's willing to feed the poor with us, we're ready or willing to work with anybody. And we have won grants uh, from the Tony Lumulu Foundation and also from Jumpstart Accelerator that's making us set up our factory and so forth. And since we're also located in the rural areas, we are giving job opportunities to women. We're giving job opportunities to women there. Instead of you guys uh, migrating to some Arab country or whatever, we're making them stay in, uh, in their own place with their own family, and we're paying them, as, at least from what we can, we're paying them with a small amount of money and making them stay. So with seed bombs, not only are we fighting deforestation and agriculture, we are also planning to fight migration, which if we create a job opportunity in Ethiopia and pay them a good amount of money, why would we go to any other foreign country, right? Um, so we have a distribution channel in the future. Of course, as I said, right now we're in the Gurage region. We're planning to come to Addis, and we're going to have different sense agents that would allow us to connect with different farmers. And we're really, really planning to work with the government, especially with this green legacy movement for the summer. And then we want to distribute the seed balls to different parts of Africa. As I said, we've started working with Kenya but we want to expand it to different parts because they can't go hungry and we can't be the rich ones, right? So Africa will go together, not only Ethiopia, but we all go together, and that's our seed bombs plan. I feed one Ethiopian, it means I feed another African, so that's the way we're going. We have went to so many places so far from what we've done. When we started seed bomb, we started on teaching the kids on how to make seed balls because we believe the kids are the future and they need to know about greenery, planting, and so forth. So we started with the kids and then we went to the intellectual professionals like people with Down syndrome and we believe uh, mental health can be retrieved by using nature. If we're close to nature, our mental health will be so much better. So that's one of the things that we do. We went to Makale, we went to Bahardar. In, uh, one proud thing I did was in Bahardar, we went to the agriculture school and we actually taught them on how to make seed bombs and so forth. And then we had a thing called Astrobus Ethiopia where we toured the north of Ethiopia in 10 days and we taught different universities and high schools on how to plant trees, the use of plantation, climate change, and of course its effect and its solutions, the simple solutions at least. So what we basically do here is 
With Climate Change Africa, we create the platform for the youth and experts and everybody to come together and work as one. And when it comes to seed walls, we believe it's one of the solutions that would really change the way agriculture is being approached here. Yeah, thank you so much.